Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. MSI files are typically used to install Windows software. Well, uh, no big surprise here. They can also be used to install malicious software. Xavier took a closer look at a couple of samples that he found where bad guys were abusing MSI files in order to trick users into installing malware. So if you're coming across MSI files that you would like to investigate further, take a look at Xavier's post. He walks you through some of the tricks to use in order to learn more about these files. And April last year, there was a deserialization vulnerability that has been patched in Jenkins. This particular vulnerability is now being used to install cryptocurrency miners, in particular Monero miners, on unpatched servers. The tool being deployed here is again XM Rig, the standard Monero miner. And as it has become kind of common for these kind of attacks, uh, well, it's uh, quite lucrative. According to Checkpoint, who looked into this particular attack, uh, they saw about $3 million worth of Monero being mined by these systems. Now, when you're trying to exploit flaws on Windows systems, uh, one of the techniques often being employed is uh, to load new code into DLLs that are already loaded in the memory. This way, you do bypass a lot of the checks that are happening as DLLs are loaded in memory. Now, last year, Microsoft implemented a new feature that's particularly meant to protect Microsoft Edge. It's called ACG, search short for Arbitrary Code Guard. In this particular case, signed code pages are immutable and you can no longer make any changes to DLLs that are protected by ACG and that are in memory. Now, while this at first sounds like a fairly straightforward to implement feature, Microsoft also had to work around how particular modern browsers are operating. Modern browsers rely a lot on just-in-time compilers, where code is really sort of compiled as it's being executed. So the way Microsoft accomplishes this is by allowing the process, this just-in-time compiler, to reserve some memory that then can be written to and where code can be executed in this memory. The problem here is that the addresses where the memory will be allocated are somewhat predictable. And with this net hacker who can compromise this process can actually swap out the content in this memory area and then have it executed. At this point, there is no fix from Microsoft. Uh, Google did publish details about this vulnerability after its deadline to have it fixed expired. Overall, I don't really see this as a huge issue. It's a security feature bypass. In order for it to really become into play, you first need a vulnerability to actually trigger this particular bypass. Well, and talking about bugs, there has also been an interesting bug reported in APFS, the Apple file system that was introduced with the latest version of Mac OS. The problem here happens with sparse disk images. Sparse disk images do have a maximum size, but they grow as data is actually being written to the disk image. So you often, for example, find them used in in these disk images that you download and then mount in order to install software. The problem here is if you copy an APFS sparse image from one system to another and the second system has less space available on its physical disk than the APFS system has allocated on the original disk. Now, let's say you're copying a one gigabyte disk from one system to another, that particular disk originally had 500 gigabytes allocated. Uh, you only have one gigabyte used so far, so everything is fine at this point. But as you start growing the disk, as you start writing more data to it, then uh, 
macOS no longer reflects the proper free space on the disk. It sort of keeps the old free disk space around and does not adjust it for the new smaller disk. Even worse, once you run out of space as you write data to the disk, well, uh, you don't get an error message. So you actually think the data was written, but it was actually not written. So not necessarily a security vulnerability, but well, uh, availability is part of security security and these sparse images are often used sort of for backup systems and the like. That's sort of why this is a potential problem. No word yet from Apple as to if this will be fixed. The older Apple file format did correctly adjust the free space left on these sparse images as they were copied to systems with smaller physical disks. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.